quick revision video on enthalpy change of neutralization. So we'll start with some basics. There's the definition and the key thing there is it's about the production of one mole of water. All neutralizations can be simplified to the same ionic equation of that. And as a result of that, delta H newt for all strong acids is minus 57 kilojoules per mole. And that's because they're all fully dissociated. If you've got a weak acid, it's going to be less than minus 57 kilojoules per mole. And that's because they are only partially dissociated. And finally, we can determine that experimentally by calorimetry. So we'll look at the procedure for that now. So the first thing we do is we get equal volumes and concentrations of acid and alkali in separate containers and we allow them to reach the same temperature. And you'd measure the temperature of the acid and alkali, obviously before mixing. Add them together in a, something like a polystyrene coffee cup with a lid, which minimizes heat loss and you measure the maximum temperature reached. And we'd use at least one mole per decimeter cubed acid and alkali to get a decent temperature rise. So the apparatus would look something like that. As you can see you've got your polystyrene cup, lid, thermometer, and a stirrer to ensure that the temperature is evenly distributed inside the solution. So we'll just finish with a typical calculation so there's some information. So if you wanted to have a go at that before I go through the answer, just pause the video now and then play on when you're ready. So first thing, there's the equation for the reaction. And then we're going to work out the moles of acid and alkali used. Remember we use the same volume and concentration. So they're both 2 times 0 0.025, 0 0.05. So the moles of these are the same. You can see there's a one-to-one -one ratio with those to the water. So the moles of water formed is also that 0 0.05. Remember, enthalpy change of neutralization is all about the moles of water formed. We then work out the energy change of the solution in the cup. So that's the MC delta T bit. 50 for the combined mass of the solutions. You've got two lots of 25 cm cubed. Told that the density needs to be the same as water. So that would be 50 grams times the specific heat capacity of the solution times the temperature change. So that gives us that many joules. Remember it comes out in joules and then convert to kilojoules because enthalpy change is normally expressed in kilojoules per mole. Moles of water, as a reminder there, was 0 0.05. So the energy change per mole of water formed, so that's that Q value in kilojoules divided by the moles of water formed gives you 56.43 kilojoules per mole and finally the delta H therefore the enthalpy change of neutralization is minus 56.43 so the temperature of the solution went up so it's exothermic whatever you do don't forget the sign and then finally they sometimes ask about limitations of the experimental procedure so experimental values often differ the less exothermic from data values because of the fact that heat's lost to the surroundings. The experiment was probably carried out under non-standard conditions in the lab and we haven't taken into account the specific heat capacity of the cup and so some of the heat from the reaction is going to be used to change the temperature of the cup whereas we've kind of ignored that.